<laughs> it's gonna be in a dimension that's never been. Yeah, there. it's gonna be. A, it's gonna be it, it, the greatest thing floating in 2024. Mark the words. No way. <laughs> in a in a whole different realm of business. Cat Williams recently featured on a podcast where he fearlessly revealed numerous industry wrongdoings, drawing the attention of influential figures. Notably, he openly discussed Oprah during the interview. Now, there's talk circulating that Oprah is attempting to intimidate Cat, but it appears that he remains steadfast and unyielding in the face of any pressure. 2024 kicked off with a bang, wouldn't you say? Before we even hit the first weekend of the year, we've already witnessed the emergence of the first viral moments, complete with some highly meme words the activity. For those dwelling under a rock, the comedian and provocateur Cat Williams made a memorable appearance on Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast, causing quite a stir. Oprah coming next. <laughs> <laughs> Once I establish this as a place of truth, yeah. oh yeah, watch. In the context of the podcast, Let the Chop a Spray is slang for going all out, taking shots at various peers and individuals while dropping names. Essentially, Cat Williams unleashed his thoughts without holding back. His presence on the show has set the social media streets ablaze, making 2024 feel notably spicy. Why did he choose Club Shay Shay? Well, according to Cat, he took the opportunity because Shannon had allowed certain individuals to share bold-faced lies on his couch, and Cat felt the need to address and correct them. Well, all right then, Cat Williams didn't hold back when it came to calling out Cedric the Entertainer, Steve Harvey, Michael Blackson, Faison Love, Kevin Hart, Ricky Smiley, Oprah Winfrey, and more. It seemed like Cat had been biding his time for the perfect moment to critique people's talents, skills, and content quality. The podcast episode, spanning almost three hours, was a relentless exploration of shade directed at Oprah, Steve, Kevin, and Ricky, among others. Even figures like Martin Lawrence found themselves in the crossfire. It was a masterclass in both stirring the pot and fearlessly speaking truth to power. All of these, uh, Deviance is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. It's worth noting that the targets of Kat's criticism likely harbor no affection for him either. The podcast created an atmosphere where no one was spared from the verbal onslaught. But where is this hate coming from? There was a time, not too long ago, when Oprah Winfrey enjoyed an almost untouchable status among the black community, an unproblematic interviewer and entertainer responsible for much of our cherished content. However, her image has experienced a noticeable decline in recent times. A quick search of her name on the once revered Twitter platform reveals top tweets delving into what some assume was a questionable relationship with the late Michael Jackson. Further down the feed, numerous users express sentiments along the lines of Oprah has always been an awful person, and suggest that she is now facing the consequences she deserves. The shift in public perception reflects a stark contrast to the once widely held admiration for Oprah within the black community. Additionally, in his Netflix comedy stand-up, Dave Chappelle has also discussed the notion that individuals such as Kevin Hart and Oprah Winfrey might be compromising their values for fame and wealth by aligning themselves with Hollywood's elite. And this is what he said. They were in on the whole thing. I felt so wronged. I felt so stupid. Can you guess what he is trying to say? I think Dave is trying to say that people like Oprah have been involved in this heinous game for a very long time, and he feels stupid now, right? Well, this is just a guess. But Dave also said that the public's perception of Hollywood is at odds with reality, and that it is filled with lovable people like Oprah Winfrey. Dave supposedly remarked that once you see their genuine faces, you won't be able to stand them since they are too diabolical to bear. He said, it's the same that these me to be was trying to tell you about but they hate for how it f and i hate that for how it eats but my god man it's the same these days, Oprah Winfrey is all over the news for the terrible things she's doing in the media business. And Dave is said to have expressed his frustration with the ease with which sugar-coated personalities like Oprah can move around. There have been observations suggesting that Oprah Winfrey may have played a role in signaling Dave's downfall, almost as if she were aware of her actions. Reflecting on the past, it's worth noting that Oprah has faced various controversies. These range from accusations of participating in smear campaigns against her critics and undermining their professional lives to more unsettling allegations involving her purported connection. Oprah legitimized the notorious criminal Jao Tashira, a.k.a. John of God, as a miraculous faith healer, one who could cure cancer, 
Speaking of smear campaigns against critics, the Monique Oprah controversy stands out prominently. For those unfamiliar, Oprah Winfrey has been accused of significantly damaging Monique's career, to the point where Monique is purportedly facing homelessness. What's striking is that Oprah has not issued an apology to Monique for the harm that has been done. So for eight years, for eight years, my family has suffered and my career has suffered because what I would not allow those entities to do was bully me. But why hasn't Oprah apologized yet? Obviously, because of her ego and pride. In 2009, Oprah and Tyler Perry released their Lee Daniels-directed film, Precious to the World. The makers of the film made the decision to send Monique on a publicity tour in order to capitalize on the enthusiasm produced by the media as a direct result of the positive critical reception the movie garnered. She said, I had no idea I'd been blackballed because I don't think that Hollywood has turned its nose up to me," said the actor, suggesting someone had decided to teach Monique a lesson because she's not playing the game. And you know what the thing that left me in awe was that Monique literally said that Oprah was making unreasonable demands during their movie campaigns. This is what Monique said, We were out on the campaign and she was making unreasonable demands. And this is where reverse racism I think happens. After that, Lee Daniels allegedly made threats against Monique, telling her that she would face something ugly. Lee was taking Oprah's side but after some time, Monique revealed that Lee said some strange things about Oprah. Monique said, I think that those are feelings that Mr. Daniels is having. He said, you know, Monique, she didn't thank the producers at the Oscars. She didn't thank the studio, and that's just not things that you do. This makes me hypothesize that Oprah is also not good to the junior artists or the staff that are usually present during the movie. It would appear that the general public has long suspected that Oprah is hiding something. The details of Oprah Winfrey's actions extend beyond the mentioned incidents delving into more disturbing aspects. Monique, who had previously spoken out about being bullied by her older brother Gerald from the ages of 7 to 11, faced disbelief when she initially shared her traumatic experiences. The estrangement between Monique and Gerald became more pronounced when he was convicted of harassing another woman, leading to a 12-year prison sentence. In 2010, Oprah extended an invitation to Gerald to appear on her show, even making an effort to bring Monique along. Despite Monique's refusal to participate, Oprah went ahead and not only invited Gerald but also their parents. During the show, Monique was taken aback as Oprah's actions seemed to minimize the gravity of the ordeal she had endured, causing further distress for Monique. I did assault and inappropriately touch my sister in manners that were not comfortable for her, and for that I apologize. Monique's devastation was compounded when Oprah seemingly disregarded her attempts to seek comfort. Upon encountering Oprah for the first time in Hollywood, Monique harbored skepticism regarding Oprah's assertion that she was unaware of Gerald bringing her family to the show. In an interview, Monique recounted the encounter, stating, She then said, Do you want to come on the show because he wants to apologize to you? I said, Oprah, I don't want no part of that. Not only this, Oprah has been hit with serious charges of trafficking and enabling from well-known investors like Jeffrey Epstein the S offender, and Harvey Weinstein. It all started when he went unfavorably viral in 2021 for an unearthed 2003 interview with Dolly Parton in which Winfrey asked her pointed questions about her plastic surgery. That moment prompted actress Rose McGowan, one of the progenitors of the hash Me Too movement, to come at her neck in a now-deleted tweet. Rose McGowan has raised concerns about Oprah Winfrey's connections, citing her relationship with disgraced producer Harvey Weinstein and her withdrawal as a producer from a documentary highlighting Russell Simmons' essay Accusers. In a tweet, McGowan expressed her skepticism about Oprah's authenticity, accusing her of being part of a problematic power structure for personal gain. McGowan stated, I am glad more are seeing the ugly truth of Oprah. I wish she were real, but she isn't. From being pals with Weinstein to abandoning and destroying Russell Simmons' victims, she is about supporting a sick power structure for personal gain. She is as fake as they come. Hash Lizard. Oprah's association with Weinstein Weinstein has been a source of controversy for years. In 2018, singer Seal accused Oprah of being aware of Weinstein's misconduct and not taking any action. Seal wrote in a deleted post, Oh, I forgot, that's right. You'd heard the rumors, but you had no idea he was actually serially assaulting young starry-eyed actresses, who in turn had no idea what they were getting into. My bad. When you have been part of the problem for decades, but suddenly they all think you are the solution. During the height of the Hash Me Too movement, Oprah positioned herself as a major champion and advocate, speaking out against numerous particular activities in the industry. However, some critics have pointed out her association with Harvey Weinstein, the Hollywood 
Hollywood producer who faced numerous SM allegations. Despite her support for the Hash Me Too movement, Oprah's connections with Weinstein have raised questions and criticism from some quarters. And if we make this just about Harvey Weinstein, then it, we will have lost this moment. According to multiple reports, it has been revealed that many prominent figures in Hollywood were aware of Harvey Weinstein's actions and the way he mistreated women. Despite this knowledge, his behavior was tolerated and even enabled by some in the industry. Oprah Winfrey is allegedly one of the major personalities who had connections with Weinstein and was part of the Hollywood circle, where information about his misconduct was known. When something this major happens, when you have the fallout, 50 women coming forward, that it's a watershed moment. Oprah Winfrey's philanthropy and generosity are well documented, but even these aspects of her public image faced criticism. In September, Oprah and Dwayne The Rock Johnson, with their combined net worth exceeding $3 billion, reportedly asked the public to contribute to the Maui wildfires while allegedly contributing only $10 million themselves. The accompanying video's comment section received so much criticism that it had to be turned off. While opinions on TikTok should be taken with caution, the significant number of views on videos expressing disapproval, along with the critical comments, suggest a growing sentiment of weariness toward Oprah that has been building for years. Unlike many of her talk show contemporaries from the 1980s and 1990s, Oprah has not only maintained but also increased her influence and wealth over the years. Being a billionaire puts her in a rarefied category, possibly allowing her to wield influence behind the scenes in ways that the public may not be aware of. This has led to conspiracy theories, evident in search results for Oprah Winfrey Illuminati. And now in a controversial Club Shay Shay interview, comedian Cat Williams expressed the sentiment that when you're a billionaire, you can essentially do as you please. This perspective suggests that Oprah's influence may transcend her identity as a black woman, and people are beginning to acknowledge and question this aspect of her power. Although the mystery continues when Oprah was linked to a Brazilian self-proclaimed medium and convicted felon named John of God. After years of operating a spiritual healing center in Brazil, John was arrested arrested and given a 63-year prison sentence for assaulting multiple women. However, Oprah Winfrey claimed to have had a deep experience during her talk with John when he appeared on her show and traveled to Brazil to meet him before his arrest. This is an interview I wasn't sure would ever happen. One of the most famous spiritual healers in the world rarely talks to anyone on camera. Moreover, Oprah has also links with Tyler Perry and Steve Harvey, who have, according to him, played a significant role in his downfall. Cat Williams' revelations about his former idol, Oprah Winfrey, may come as a surprise to some. However, the shock deepens as he goes on to claim that Steve Harvey, another beloved figure, has allegedly made a deal involving his soul with Hollywood. Williams' assertions raise questions about the entertainment industry and the potential hidden agreements or compromises made by prominent figures within it. Big Steve Harvey some stand up man now I'm a kiss no girl who owned TV one he used to kiss her that's how he had to rate certainly Cat Williams is widely acknowledged as one of the most hilarious comedians of his generation celebrated for his raw humor and captivating performances in popular stand-up specials Despite his talent and recognition among the comedy elite in Hollywood, Williams hasn't achieved the same widespread exposure as some of his counterparts. A supporter pointed out, unlike Kevin Hart, he hasn't taken on leading roles in big budget movies, and he doesn't host a show like Steve Harvey. Expressing a sense of hopelessness, Williams once declared, I'm officially announcing my retirement from stand-up. I'm kind of done. I've already discussed it with my kids. I wasn't planning to make this announcement on a Seattle street. I was going to Los Angeles to do it in in the offices of ICM or Live Nation. Rumors have circulated suggesting that Williams may have been blacklisted from the industry, prompting inquiries into why he hasn't achieved the same level of success as figures like Steve Harvey. It's worth noting that Williams and Harvey have had a strained relationship for over a decade, and there seems to be a significant reason behind their ongoing discord. Well, you know, to be honest with you, Frankie, I didn't, I didn't know nothing about this concept. When the promoter told me about it in October, I shot it down because that ain't how I've ever promoted a show. To uncover the roots of their long-standing feud, we need to rewind to December 2008 when Cat Williams openly criticized Steve Harvey before a Christmas season show. This incident served as the starting point for their conflict, which has persisted for over a decade. It's important to acknowledge that both Cat Williams and Steve Harvey have experienced disputes with other comedians, and this particular incident was no different. The origins of their feud can be pinpointed to a public challenge initiated by Cat Williams. He 
confidently declared that he could outshine Steve Harvey and seize the title of the King of Comedy during an upcoming New Year's Eve show where both comedians were slated to headline. Oh, I, now, I was on the Steve Harvey show, and Steve Harvey, who is going to call in at 545 and get the record straight. Jamie Foxx reportedly played a role in the ongoing conflict between Cat Williams and Steve Harvey. At the time, Foxx, who was a radio host, aired a clip of Williams dissing Harvey. This action likely fueled the feud between the two comedians. During a joint comedy gig, Williams warned Harvey saying, I want to apologize for what's going to happen, but the second that you get on stage, I need you to understand that that's your final time as the king of comedy. Water seeks its own level, you can't stop it, playboy. It is what it is, so I hope you're ready. I hope you got a team of writers, you're gonna need about six or seven of them. In response to the clip, Harvey called into the radio show expressing his bewilderment about the entire situation. You know, I've always been on tour with, with, with some real <laughs> man. I toured yeah. with the Kings. You know, I've been on stage with Sid, DL, and Bernie Mac at the same time. However, on the anticipated event night, Cat Williams took center stage and didn't hold back. He unleashed a barrage of punches aimed at Steve Harvey's comedy reputation while also playfully poking fun at his clothes and hair. Addressing the crowd, Williams likely delivered sharp and humorous remarks about Harvey throughout his performance. He quipped, please give it up for Steve Harvey, he's one of the best we've ever had, but he don't want no parts of this in no shape or form. I don't know why he came out here with all this money y'all spent on these expletive tickets and talked about a lady in the audience for 15 minutes, but won't talk about me the way I'm getting ready to talk about his expletive made expletive. Cat Williams' rise to fame wasn't handed to him on a silver platter. He had to build his comedic empire from the ground up, starting in Avondale, Cincinnati. He meticulously honed his craft by performing stand-up comedy in various venues across the country, from the lively streets of Oklahoma to the vibrant stages of Oakland. Fearlessly, Williams delivered his routines, perfecting his unique style along the way through hard work and dedication. And act like ain't happened. You in the middle of a goddamn meeting. Now, yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the movie with you and then we're gonna, we're gonna go back. Shifting the focus to Steve Harvey, he is widely recognized as a devoted family man who prioritizes his loved ones. Despite this positive image, Cat Williams reportedly claims that Harvey is merely a charlatan, concealing his true self behind a carefully constructed facade for an extended period. According to Cat, opinions about Steve's comedic talent vary significantly depending on the source, adding complexity to their relationship dynamics and influencing the public perception of Harvey's image. You have been the king of comedy as long as we've had one. Matter of fact, the whole phrase king of comedy can be attributed that you get off stage. Certainly, Cat Williams has established a reputation not only for his comedic talents, but also as a noteworthy whistleblower in Hollywood. He has been vocal about various issues and controversies within the entertainment industry, shedding light on matters that are often left unspoken or overlooked. Doing in the ATL to at least excuse himself, go to the bathroom or something. According to Cat Williams, Steve Harvey's public image may not be universally positive. Depending on whom you ask, Harvey is either hailed as one of the funniest individuals globally or regarded as a celebrity with a less than stellar reputation. Williams has asserted that Harvey has some undisclosed issues, including rumors of mistreatment towards his staff. Persistent rumors have circulated regarding the renowned comedian and talk show host not treating his staff well. Moreover, after his talk show relocated to Los Angeles, Harvey allegedly issued a controversial memo to his new staff, making demands that are typically associated with tour riders. And I could not find a way to walk from the stage to my dressing room, to sit in my makeup chair, to walk from my dressing room to the stage. In the leaked memo, Steve Harvey further stated, my security team will stop everyone from standing at my door who have the intent to see or speak to me. I want all the ambushing to stop now. That includes TV staff. You must schedule an appointment. I have been taken advantage of by my lenient policy in the past. This ends now. No more. Do not approach me while I'm in the makeup chair unless I ask to speak with you directly. Either knock or use the doorbell. Steve Harvey defended himself, asserting that the controversial memo aimed to secure more free time during his day. He explained that the memo was a response to what he perceived as a too lenient open-door policy during his show's run in Chicago. Harvey reiterated this defense a few days later while discussing the leaked letter with Entertainment Tonight. Look, man, I'm in my makeup chair, they walk in the room. I'm having lunch, they walk in, they don't knock, he continued. I'm in the hallway, I'm getting ambushed by people with friends that come to the show and having me sign this and do this. I 
just said, wait a minute. And in hindsight, I probably should have handled it a little bit differently. Cat Williams seems to have legitimate reasons for his grievances against Steve Harvey. In November 2015, the Think Like a Man author faced a lawsuit for allegedly backing out of plans to lease a private jet. This happened after over $400,000 worth of renovations had been initiated, reportedly at Harvey's request. The requested enhancements included custom carpet, a reconfiguration of the interior cabin from 16 seats to 14 seats, custom seat design, and new upper and lower cabin sidewalls, according to TMZ reports. Steve Harvey is, according to a, a private jet company, he did not pay the bill. This is a fabulous story. After so they he, customized the hell out of the thing lives. for Furthermore, at the Ocean Center in Daytona Beach, a lineup of comedians took command of the stage, delivering their unique brands of humor, each performance lasting a generous 12 to 15 minutes. Despite the diversity in their comedic styles, every comedian successfully elicited laughter, keeping the audience in stitches throughout the night. The humor extended even to playful jests about audience members, including lighthearted banter about white-on-white -white seat disputes. Then, the moment everyone had eagerly anticipated arrived. Stepping into the spotlight, the headliner of the evening, Cat Williams, took center stage. As part of his Dark Matter tour, Williams served up a comedic feast, skillfully blending current events with his unique brand of humor. The result? An evening that left everyone enriched with laughter and smiles. In today's world where people are constantly weighed down by the demands of work, family responsibilities, and a ceaseless barrage of distressing news from both television and the internet, it's becoming increasingly rare to experience those hearty, honest-to-goodness belly laughs that were once a staple of life. It's connection, comedian John Ronson says. That's what this show's about. It's about us and the audience connecting with each other. There's something about being in the same room with somebody, reading each other's body language too. It's no wonder that comedy shows are finding themselves in high demand, not just across the nation, but around the globe. And when it comes to Cat Williams' show, there's an irresistible allure that beckons people away from the confines of their homes. For enthusiasts of Cat Williams, attending his show transcends a mere night of jokes. It's an immersive experience that connects the absurdities of the world with the shared laughter of a like-minded audience. Fearlessly, Williams delves into the headlines of the day, humorously poking fun at figures ranging from Trump with his mugshot to DeSantis in a yin-yang manner, and exploring Biden alongside the concept of unclaimed baggage. He navigates the complexities of reparations, sprinkles in humor about Ukraine, and playfully ventures into the mysterious world of UFOs. Cat's fans may not express it eloquently, but his show feels like tuning in to a fellow traveler skillfully navigating the labyrinth of the bizarre and bewildering aspects of our world. It provides the audience with an opportunity to connect, momentarily letting go of the weight of the world, and collectively sharing laughter at the sheer ridiculousness of it all. What makes it even more remarkable, according to his fans, is that throughout the performance, the comedians unabashedly poke fun at the very things that are supposed to divide us. In their own unique way, they bring us closer together, reminding us that laughter is a unifying force, even in the face of what might seem insurmountable differences. This is where I brows raised and people began connecting many mishaps in Cat Williams' life with his alleged dark revelations about the entertainment industry. Starting his career in his teenage years, Cat Williams has developed a comedic style that combines articulate and razor-sharp dialogue with a keen eye for the ever-evolving American political landscape. His stand-up prowess has earned critical acclaim, reflected in memorable specials like The Pimp Chronicles, Cat Williams, Pimpadelic, American Hustle, Cat Pacalypse, Cat Williams, Great America, and the most recent, Cat Williams, World War III, on Netflix. In one of his comedy shows, he expressed, the past is something for you to learn from, and the future is something that you hope is going to happen, but I'm always speaking to my actual fans in present tense. However, Kat's talents extend beyond comedy. He has left his mark in the realm of acting, beginning with a guest spot on NYPD Blue in 2002 and making a memorable impact as Money Mike in his first feature film, Friday After Next. His presence has graced numerous TV series and films, including Father Figures, Norbit, Scary Movie V, Epic Movie, Cats and Dogs, The Revenge of Kitty Galore, and iconic appearances in The Boondocks and Wild and Out. Say hi, Daddy. Say hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. Whose goddamn white baby is that? 
This is your baby, okay? William's guest role on FX's critically acclaimed series Atlanta further solidified his talent, earning him a coveted Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Comedy Series in 2018. I am a person who does not seek validation. I, I make sure that when I leave the house that I feel tall enough and special enough, and as an actor, I feel like... Cat Williams, armed with a wealth of experience in the entertainment industry, has become a noteworthy figure unearthing the industry's well-kept secrets. He seems to possess an insider's knowledge, perhaps more than most, about the concealed truths lurking behind the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. With unwavering resolve, Cat has taken on the role of a whistleblower, fearlessly exposing eye-opening revelations that have reverberated like seismic shocks across the realm of entertainment. And the fact of the matter is, we watched this get murdered right in front of our own face. And he knew it was finna happen, he told us, and we didn't know. In tandem with his exposés regarding the alleged conspiracy surrounding Michael Jackson's death, Cat Williams has also been an outspoken advocate for addressing the portrayal of black actors donning feminine attire within the entertainment industry. So many believe that Oprah is now trying to scare Cat because she can be exposed to a next level. One person on the internet wrote, Cat is spot on. I've never cared for Tyler Perry, and began to see through Oprah years ago. Power corrupts, and the love of money is the root of all evil. Another one added, I respect Kat for sticking up for what's right and exposing all this evil in Hollywood. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.